Only a madman would look at a group of deadly praying mantis enemies as an opportunity. But after becoming a seasoned Hollow Knight player, that's exactly what I see. I'm the Flannel Fox Tim Swernick, and I reviewed Hollow Knight on the Nintendo Switch. Beginning in Dirtmouth, a small village above the Hollow Nest ruins with nothing but your trusty nail by your side, your adventure begins, with a blind leap into the ruins of an abandoned world. In the beginning of the game, you can only jump, melee attack with your nail, and regen health with your soul. As you defeat enemies, you gain soul. When you hold down the A button, Hollow Knight can charge back health. This simple health regen mechanic is so potent that it forces you to take risks in order to continue. Where in a normal game, if you're low on health, you would simply turn around and go looking for some or return to your closest regen point. However, in Hollow Knight, you are drawn to battle. With one hit left in your health, if you pull off perfect attacks, you can be back to full health in no time at all. There are so many moments where you will assess the situation, pause for a moment, then run into battle knowing that one hit could be your last. Hollow Knight is a 2D metroidvania and one of the so-called Souls-like games, referring to the awesomely brutal gameplay and from software's Dark Souls, Demon Souls, and Bloodborne. This shows itself in many different systems throughout Hollow Knight. For example, while on your journey, you're collecting Geo, the game's currency, and if you die, your Geo is gone until you find your Shade, a little shadow version of yourself, and defeat it to regain all the Geo that you lost. Another reason this is a Souls-like are the brutally difficult encounters with NPCs among the world. When exploring this beautifully grim environment, I try to be careful when moving into a new area, as death is lurking around every single corner. When faced with a difficult foe, you must learn their attack patterns, which can often take multiple lives to do so, in order to come out on top, forcing you to get good and to get good fast. It's so rewarding defeating a boss that kills you so many times, but even more rewarding to encounter that same enemy again later in game and conquering them with ease. Not because you've leveled up or gotten a new weapon, which you do not do in this game, but because you have gotten better as a player. Being a 2D Metroidvania, as you play through the game, you unlock new abilities that grant you access to different parts of the map. This being my first playthrough of the game, I truly knew nothing about it and did not know which mechanics were going to be introduced. That being said, it took me about five hours to stumble upon the wall slide wall jump, which was thrilling. One of my favorite 2D mechanics after playing Super Meat Boy, this turned a game with incredibly challenging combat into a cleverly difficult 2D platformer. Dashing and wall jumping through vine covered areas gave me a huge grin on my face almost immediately, and waiting this long into the game to introduce introduce it made the reveal all worth the while. Traveling back to an area in the beginning of the game that you remember specifically when you saw it the first walk through, then having that light bulb moment when you get the perfect ability to now go there. It is one of the best feelings in gaming and it never gets old. Each area of the map is broken up into little sections or worlds, but in order to view them on your map, you must purchase that area's map from Cornifier, the cartographer. Not knowing where to find him multiple times in new areas was getting quite frustrating until you begin to hear some faint humming. Then you see his papers on the ground, letting you know that he's close and you find him to purchase that area's map. Along with having to purchase a map, you have to purchase the ability to locate yourself on the map as well as fast travel points, resting benches, basically everything that's on a normal map. Not being a big fan of this is spending my hard-earned geo to be able to see blue cocoons on my map felt like a waste of my money. Hollow Knight is an amazing 2D metroidvania and challenging platformer with fantastically brutal combat that certainly scratches that Dark Souls itch. Just as often as I would stumble into a deadly boss battle, I would be rewarded with amazing moments of discovery, accomplishment, and victory. I can solidly recommend this game to any Switcher who's up for a great challenge. That's why I'm giving Hollow Knight on the Nintendo Switch a 9.5 out of 10. If you enjoyed this video game review, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, The Flannel Fox. Follow me on Metacritic and Twitter at The Flannel Fox, on Instagram at The Flannel Fox Gamer. And if you play Nintendo Switch on your commute, send me a pic by hashtagging your Switch commuter picks with hashtag my Switch commute. Also, watch my one minute Switch game reviews on my Instagram with every game that I review. Be sure to follow and subscribe because the more followers and subscribers I get, the more codes I get, which means I make more videos. Thanks for watching my videos, and as always, see you next time, Switchers.